And of course, you could and you should stay with us because I'm joined now by Jörg Rochol of the European School of Management and Technology in Berlin. So do you understand why a company like Siemens would invest into a country that's facing insolvency? Well, first, uh, first of all, one has to consider that uh, the investment horizons in the steel industry are very long. So this means the, the decision to really um, establish a factory in the Ukraine uh, was made a couple of years ago and nobody could foresee at that point of time that uh, we are now in an economic crisis. So therefore, um, it just takes a lot of time. Nonetheless, it's uh, a real option for uh, Siemens to actually make this decision, even if it knew that there was an economic crisis, just because they can now um, somehow serve as a shelter in the storm, meaning they have a competitive advantage over local uh, competitors uh, that do not have the financial backing of the headquarters as Siemens uh, has, where the money is coming from international capital markets. But still, what sort of risks are involved? Surely there are some. Certainly there are risks and uh, certainly there are huge risks in particular in this environment where it's not quite clear what the economic but maybe also the political stability in the Ukraine uh, looks like. Now we've heard uh, of quite a few companies now recently uh, going bankrupt. Uh, it's still quite unusual when you hear something like that about a whole nation going bankrupt. How exactly does that work? Well, it first of all means uh, that uh, the payment obligation that the country has, and Argentina is one example in 2002, uh, that they cannot meet these payment obligations anymore. So this means that investors who invested in um, bonds for these countries will not receive their money back, and thus um, there's a default, the natural default of these countries. And who's affected uh, within the country, I mean the population? Uh, certainly. Um, it just means that the state budget uh, will not be sufficient to generate um, enough surplus to pay back um, debt obligations from abroad. But it certainly then also means that uh, any um, type of social subsidy, but also investments into education, into infrastructure will certainly be um, cut down. Thus, they will immediately affect also the population in these countries. Well, you just mentioned also Argentina. I mean, there has to be and there is a way out of such a, a crisis. The IMF is uh, in high demand these days handing out loans to various countries. Ukraine uh, is one of them. What happens with the money? Well, the money is immediately uh, used for uh, the purposes that um, I just described before. This means um, it just uh, first is needed to balance the state budget, uh, to keep uh, pension systems, for example, going, uh, social um, security systems going, but also to invest into, say, education and infrastructure. But what if a country fails doing all that? So you mean if they fail to, uh, to, uh, to keep the, uh, the uh, payments going? Yeah. Well, certainly this will um, lead to immediate political uh, unrest. And this is what we see now in the summit of the uh, foreign ministers in the European Union uh, that meet today or who meet today uh, to just discuss exactly this, how to help um, a country that gets into this deep economic trouble and uh, how this may also may affect the uh, political situation in the country. So obviously the rest of the European Union, for example, would be affected if a country like uh, Ukraine or Hungary uh, did go bankrupt indeed. Uh, absolutely, and uh, this both from an economic and a uh, political perspective. Uh, European banks are heavily exposed to um, uh, the, the climate, the economic climate uh, in Eastern Europe, so they would be affected if debt would not be repaid. At the same time, uh, also from the demand perspective, German exports, European exports into these countries could not work um, at some point. And uh, nonetheless, as we disc uh, well, let's say furthermore, uh, we discussed the political part that is also uh, quite critical. Okay. Thank you very much, Jörg Rochol, for joining us. Thank you.